Uh, Mark, good to see you from Oxico. You've had two pieces of significant news that I'm very interested in updates, starting with Bolivia. On September 12th of this year, we announced that we had signed um, uh, a memorandum of understanding with a, a group in Bolivia called El Benton. And this is a very interesting property uh, for a number of reasons. Um, this is a past producing property. Uh, they had exported niobium concentrates uh, to Germany in 2013. It's fully permitted. They have environmental permits. They have mining operating permits. And uh, so we believe this is a project that can uh, deliver a near-term cash flow uh, as we can do direct shipping more quite uh, quickly and easily from that property. Uh, we've taken uh, and looked at a number of samples from this property. And uh, this is primarily a niobium and tantalum uh, bearing property. Uh, some of the concentrates we're getting uh, from the El Benton property are in the range of about 50% niobium, 22% tantalum, and those are exceptional grades. Uh, and that's direct shipping uh, concentrate that we can do from the property. Uh, in addition uh, to the tantalum and niobium, we are discovering uh, a slew of rare earth elements too, uh, including neodymium, gadolinium, uh, and others. Uh, neodymium is probably the, the most interesting one, and we're getting uh, in the concentrates grades of close to 11%. And uh, neodymium, together with uh, praseodymium, terbium, and dysprosium, they're the four key elements that are needed in the uh, magnets that go into the electric vehicle motors, that go into the EVs, that are powering the green revolution. So if you don't have access to those four, uh, you're going to have a problem creating the magnets and creating the motors. So uh, our goal as Oxico is to be uh, a leader in, in providing uh these kind of materials to the industry and, and helping that green revolution along. So it's my understanding, based on your investor talk, Mark, you were talking about how you picked up a past producing mine. How was Oxico able to find this? Can you tell us a little bit more about how you brought the deal together? Yes, uh, we have a, a geologist um, that uh, is from Bolivia. I knew this property uh, quite well, and he worked uh, with us on our Colombian property. So uh, he introduced us to this property, to the owners. And again, we looked at some of the uh, the data. Uh, this is a past producing uh, mine in Bolivia. It exported niobium uh, to Germany about 10 years ago. It's fully permitted. It has environmental permits, mining operating permits, and it's rich in a number of uh, elements. Uh, so they have produced concentrates with uh, significant amounts of niobium, tantalum, uh, there's uh, a number of rare earth elements, including neodymium, which is a key element in the magnets. And we've also identified a lithium uh, anomaly on the property that, uh, again, it merits more work. But uh, again, it seems to be it's polymetallic and it's uh, a number of the strategic and critical minerals that we hope to uh, feed to the market. So um, uh, we talked to the owners. Uh, they require some capital to renew the permits. And we have an arrangement whereby we will... Uh, provide the necessary capital to begin uh, direct shipping of concentrates. And we'll have an 85% interest for 140,000 US dollars, which to us seemed like a good deal. So specifically, um, you know, first of all, your news releases are better written than most in the market. <laughs> you said that your, your objective is to relaunch the mine for production and you really focus on the niobium and tantalum. Can you give us a little bit more of the timeline on when you plan on relaunching it? Uh, yeah, so right now, uh, I mean, we just announced this in September, so it's fairly recent. Uh, we need to renew the environmental and uh, operating permits, which is uh, uh, the owners, current owners are in the process of doing that. Uh, that shouldn't take too long, maybe a couple of months, and then we'll look at how we can uh, begin to uh, produce those uh, concentrates and ship them. So it's probably definitely going to go into the new year, 2024. But uh, the good thing about this property, uh, Tracy, is that it's, uh, as I said, it's fully permanent. It's uh, about 200 kilometers from Santa Cruz, uh, which is the, you know, the business capital of Bolivia, easy access. And, uh, you know, the fact that it has produced in the past is good. And it did have uh, customers in Germany and so forth. So uh, we hope to uh, relaunch this uh, as quickly as possible once we get the permits. So speaking of that, you know, really Oxico has been a front runner at actually getting deals and actually producing and selling as you've done in the Congo already. But let's let's flip to Colombia now. You've had some news recently. Can you give us an update? Yes. So uh, we've we've worked in Colombia for a number of years, and uh, 
uh, in order to begin small scale production, uh, we need a couple of permits. Uh, one is from the National Mining Agency, which we received some time ago. The other is an environmental permit, which uh, we received recently. And so the mining agency has given us a registration certificate, which now it says you can go and operate the property. Uh, one of the things that we did in Colombia was we had uh, an option to buy the property. So we would be the property owner as well as the miner in that region. So just just make it easier to, to begin production. So we're in the process of transferring that title to Oxico, which could take a bit of time. But in the meantime, uh, we're, we have an agreement where we have uh, basically 100% economic interest in the property. Uh, so while we're doing that uh, whole process of transferring title, we hope to begin uh, small scale production. So according to the permits we have, we can uh, produce and export up to 300 metric tons of material uh, a month. And uh, so what we've identified on the property are is uh, significant amounts of tin, and these come in the form of pebbles. So uh, it's very easy to uh, create those concentrates. You don't need uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of capex. Uh, you need uh, basically a lot of pans and screens. And uh, so we had, uh, when we were working on the property, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago, we had uh, about 22 employees on the property panning and screening, and we we're able to get those high concentrates just by doing that. So that's uh, our near-term goal is to begin uh, production there uh, of up to 300 metric tons a month. Any critical mineral follower, anyone interested in critical minerals will see that you're true and true, uh, a, <laughs> a real critical mineral company. You seem to be really focused on tantalum tin niobium, but also nickel. Can you just give us a, a background on the involvement of Central American nickel, which uh, some of us in the private markets are also following? Thank you. Yeah, so Central American nickel, or CAN, is a, is a related company. We have common directors and uh, common shareholders, common management. I, I'm one of those parties. I'm in both companies. Uh, we kept CAN private uh, because it had uh, nickel concessions in Guatemala, which uh, Previous governments were not too uh, friendly to the mining industry, which has since changed. Uh, and so CAN has acquired a, a number of properties in well, Guatemala, uh, also in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and is looking at other uh, uh, other jurisdictions for significant amounts of uh, critical minerals. Uh, and CAN is in the process of uh, 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 doing a significant fundraising, uh, working on that. And uh, in June of this year, CAN acquired a significant amount of securities of uh, Oxico. Uh, convertible debentures, shares, warrants, and all in. CAN has about 31% uh, interest on a diluted basis of Oxico. And so we did that so that uh, those shares and those securities wouldn't hit the market. And uh, we're in a bad market, as you all know. Uh, so by having those securities in friendly hands, it helps uh, helps Oxico. And also if CAN uh, succeeds, Oxico will succeed. So the, uh, the interests of both companies are aligned. And uh, both companies work together, as you mentioned, Tracy, in the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, the companies are the first ones to export uh, concentrates of rare earth elements since 1983. Uh, we've exported about uh, 1,000 metric tons to date, and we hope to uh, increase those amounts. Uh, we have another shipment that we're ready to, uh, to do right now. So, uh, you know, CAN is focused more on nickel and uh, other materials and in other jurisdictions, but... Uh, you know, the companies work uh, together in the Congo and uh, and now that CAN is a significant shareholder, has a vested interest in seeing Oxico succeed. And uh, as I said, we're trying to capitalize uh, CAN. And if that happens, then uh, with all the securities, debentures, warrants and so on that CAN owns of Oxico, that will help Oxico succeed. OK, well, that's very exciting. We've got past producing project in Bolivia and that's obviously a priority. Is that correct? Um, absolutely. It's uh, it's a key priority uh, as it's uh, fully permitted. We don't have to go through that whole permitting process. It has produced in the past. It's uh, successfully sold product to customers in Germany. And uh, I think all we have to do is to uh, restart that whole process, uh, renew the permits, which are already have already been granted. It's, a, it's an administrative process. And then we look at how we can export uh, concentrates from Bolivia, tantalum, niobium, and hopefully rare earths. It's, uh, and these, as you know, uh, Tracy, these are the building blocks of, of the new green economy. And Oxico wants to be a leader of that. On that note, if you would like more information on Oxico, and if you're following critical minerals, I'm certain you do, please go to the following website. Thank you, Mark, for joining us today. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, everyone, for your interest.